get to in class. And here they are. So we're going to look to see if polynomial expressions are factors. So what that means is let's say we had a quantity x squared plus 5x plus 6. And I asked you, is x plus 3 a factor? Well, you guys know inside and out. If we said what multiplies to 6 that adds to 5, you would go, oh, 3 and 2. So x plus 3 and x plus 2 are the factors, right? Let's take a second to look at what this would look like using polynomial division. Or sorry, synthetic division. If we gave you a problem that says x squared plus 5x plus 6 and take that and divide it by the quantity x plus 3 in synthetic division you guys said we would set x plus 3 equal to 0 and solve so we would get negative 3 in the box you guys said we put coefficients in the top row, so in front of degree 2, in front of degree 1, and constant. You guys said that we add inside, multiply outside. So inside we'd have 1 plus 0 is 0, get 1. Outside we'd multiply. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. We would add on the inside, we'd get 2. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0. If the last number is 0, if there is no remainder, then it means our expression is a factor. Therefore, this would mean that our quantity x plus 3 is a factor. If there is no remainder, that, then that expression that you were dividing by is a factor because it goes in evenly. So finishing this problem, if we looked at it and we said, okay, x plus 3 is a factor, you could find the other factor actually by sim continuing to simplify. So if I divided x plus 3 out, if I started with degree 2, I'd be left with degree 1. So I'd have 1x and 2. So that actually is my other factor. So I would have the original given factor and this other factor. Notice I didn't have to write x plus quantity x plus 2 plus some number over x plus 3. And because I didn't have to do that, you're able to continue factoring. So I just want to kind of show you a problem that we're really good at factoring and apply synthetic division to it to show you that when there's no remainder, that means that the quantity that you were dividing by, in that last case x plus 3, is considered a factor. But if you have a number other than zero, meaning you have a remainder, then that expression is not a factor. It did not go in evenly. With that being said, let's look at A. So A says, is this quantity x minus 6 a factor? Is this a factor? Well, it's going to be yes if there's no remainder. Meaning if that last number is a zero, right, when you do synthetic division. So let's... Let's go through the process. So first step is we would set x minus 6 equal to 0 and solve. So if we add 6 to both sides, we would get x equals 6. That's the number that's going to go on the outside of our box. Our coefficients go in this top row. So we have coefficient of x to the fourth is a 1. Coefficient in front of the third power is a negative 8. Coefficient of squared is a 16. The next coefficient in front of the x or degree 1 is a negative 23. And the constant, the number by itself, is negative 6. So we can fill out that box on the outside and this top row by looking at the problem. Now we're going to add on the inside and multiply on the outside. So in the first column, 1 plus 0 is 1. Now on the outside, we'll multiply. So we're going to say 1 times 6 
whatever that value is goes in this next slot. You weave inside, outside, inside, outside. So one times six will get us six. And six plus negative eight is negative two. Next, we're on the outside, so we multiply. Negative two times six is negative 12, and that answer goes here. So negative two times negative six is negative 12. We're back on the inside. Negative 12 and 16 is four. We're now back on the outside, so four times six is 24. And that will go here. On the inside, we add 24, negative 23 is one. Now, we're on the outside, we multiply. One times six is six, and that goes here. Now, we add six and negative six is zero. When that last number is a zero, that means there is no remainder Meaning, in this case, the quantity x minus 6 is a factor. Is a factor. Now let's look at one more problem like this. Is the quantity x plus 3 a factor? Is this a factor? Does it go in evenly? Is there no remainder? Well, let's see. Step one, we're gonna set x plus three equal to zero and solve. And when we do that, we get x is negative three. That number is going to go on the outside of our synthetic division box. I'm going to make a box for degree five a box going down for degree four, and I'm not looking at the problem, I'm just making boxes. Highest degree going down five, degree four. Let's make a box for degree three, a box for degree two, a box for degree one, and then our constant, right? Constants degree zero, the number with no variable attached. I make those boxes so that I don't on accident make a mistake if I have a missing term. So in front of degree five, I have a one. In front of degree five, I have a one. Let's put a one here. In front of degree four, wait, it goes from degree five to degree three. I don't see degree four. When you don't see the degree, you're gonna put a zero because the term is missing. Now let's head on. In front of degree three, we see a negative five. In front of degree three, we see a negative five. In front of degree two, we see a positive nine. In front of degree two, we see a positive nine. In front of degree one, I see a negative one, right? Negative one. In front of degree one, I see a negative one. The constant, the last value is a three. So all of this was given in the original problem. Now we're going to add on the inside and multiply on the outside. And we're gonna see if there's a remainder or not. If there's no remainder, it goes in evenly, it's a factor. If there's a remainder, it does not go in evenly, so it's not a factor. So let's see. Add inside, multiply out. So on the inside we add. 1 and 0, there's nothing there, is 1. Now we're on the outside, we'll multiply that number by 3, and that goes in the next slot. You go inside, outside, outside, inside, and keep weaving in and out. So 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Add on the inside, negative 3 plus 0 is negative 3. On the outside, you multiply by that outside box. You're always working with the previous number. So negative three times negative three is positive nine. It goes in this box. Negative three times negative three is positive nine. Add on the inside. Nine and negative five is four. 
on the outside will multiply. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. That goes here. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Negative 12 plus 9 is negative 3. On the outside, you take the last number and multiply by the box in front. So negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. 9 minus 1 or 9 plus negative 1 is 8. 8 times negative 3 is negative 24. 8 times negative 3 is negative 24, and that goes in our next slot. And negative 24 plus 3 is negative 21. Because that last spot is a number, number other than 0, there's a remainder. Because it's a number other than 0, the quantity x plus 3 that we were checking is not a factor. It did not go in evenly didn't go in evenly. If somebody said, you know, what do you get when you divide by quantity x plus 3, you would say, I'm going to write the remainder at the end. I have a remainder of negative 21 over what I divided by x plus 3. I know if I started degree 5 and I divided on x, I'm left with degree 4. So x to the 4th x to the third, x to the second, x to the first. I'll have a constant here. Let me fill in my numbers. I have a 1 in front of degree 4. I have a negative 3 in front of degree 3. I have a 4 in front of degree 2. So I'll write a plus. I have a negative 3 in front of the x. I have a constant of 8. And we just said we have a remainder of negative 21. And we put that over quantity x plus 3. That's it for the last two problems.